Okay. Uh, but yeah, good question. We'll uh, I. I love to uh, go deeper into it and take it up another session. Maybe when we have a different forum, uh, if it so happens, we can do that. So going back to <laughs> Bhakti. So now Krishna talks about uh, different stages of Bhakti. Okay, he's told which is better. Saguna Bhakti, Nirguna Bhakti. Saguna Bhakti is better, easier. Start from there. Now he tells there are different uh, stages in Bhakti. So the highest stage is Nirguna Bhakti. Okay, highest stage is somebody has got Gnana, I told you, Shravana Manidhyasa, he is liberated, he is a Gnani. Okay, the Gnani is Parama Bhakta. That is why you see people like uh, Adi Shankaracharya, Mirabai, okay, Ramana Marshi, or any uh, Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, they are all Parama Gnanis, but still they sing the devotion, uh, they sing the devotional hymns. Okay, not because there's duality, not because there's still, they, there's oh, me and Bhagawan, no. When they are singing, when Adi Shankaracharya is singing the glory of Guru, when Adi Shankaracharya is singing the glory of Devi, he is singing his own glory. Okay, he is singing, when I say his own glory, it's not individual. For him, his own, he is, I am that consciousness. And he is singing the glory of consciousness. That is called Nirguna Bhakti. Then below that there is Saguna Bhakti, which is the whole totality, is Paramatma. Now, how do I uh, relate to that Paramatma? I relate to it in as service, a selfless service to this Paramatma, the, to the totality. The somebody who has, uh, who is in Saguna Bhakti, who is worshipping the Virat uh, Rupa of Paramatma, this person, this bhakta, is engaged in selfless service. Okay, his devotion, his devotion is not just devotion limited to devotion to a, a puja in, in a puja room for twenty minutes. His life is dedicated to selfless service. Maybe selfless service to the country, selfless service to the world. Okay. Now, please, please don't think. Whenever that's why I said, whenever you say bhakta, don't you start imagining nama and some mala and this thing. The somebody who is doing service okay, to the country is a great bhakta. Somebody who is uh, uh, taking care of animals, somebody who is taking care of nature, somebody who is serving mankind is bhakta because they are seeing divinity in that. Okay? Then the third stage is below that is Ishtadeva Upasana. Somebody says I have a Ishta Devata, maybe Rama, Krishna, Devi, Durga, Hanuman, and I relate to that. I feel a connection. Why? I don't know. There's a connection with this Ishta Devata, and I meditate on the form of the Ishta Devata, and I see the Ishta Devata in my life, and I worship the Ishta Devata. So, worship of Ishta Devata is an other form of bhakti. So, this is typically what you see. People have some Ishta Devata idol in the house, photo in the house which they worship. That is Ishta Devata Upasana, which is a part of Saguna Bhakti. Then Krishna tells, and Krishna is going uh, reverse engineering. He is doing a reverse engineering. First he is telling, do Nirguna, Nirguna Bhakti is the highest. Then he tells, if you can't do that, don't worry. Do Saguna Bhakti, which is worship of Virat Rupa. Then he tells, okay, look at his compassion, okay. Then he's telling, okay, you can't worship the whole totality as me, as Paramatma. Don't worry. Take a Ishta Devata and worship that. Then if you say, oh Lord, I can't even do that. Fine. Simply do Karma Yoga. Okay. Just do Karma Yoga as whatever you do as offering to me. Become an instrument. Think I am the instrument. Whatever I'm doing, you are working in the office or you are driving or you're cooking or whatever you're doing. Do it as an offering to me. You will get the phala of bhakti. You are a bhakta. Then he tells four things. No? All these four things. Finally he tells. You can't do any of this. You, so you can't do nirguna bhakti. You can't do saguna bhakti. You can't do ishta devata aradhana. You can't do karma yoga. Fine. At least do one thing. This is shloka 12.11. The one thing you can do is. Just renounce. 
your attachment to the fruits of your action meaning whatever result you get in life just accept it as a gift from me okay so you can't do worship you can't see nirguna you can't see saguna you can't see you can't see uh, god in your husband you can't see god in your wife fine you can you can see god in the idol no i can't see god in the idol also fine can you do karma yoga which is service whatever you're doing as an offering to the bhagwan no i can't do that also the final ultimate and he gives is if you can't do any of this whatever you do something in your life you will do something in your life you can't sit idle something you will do you will eat food you will go to work you will not not work you will do some work right whatever work you do it will it will give some result just accept that result as an offering from me and that will help you evolve that is the final ultimatum krishna tells and then he glorifies he tells this is the this is shreyas okay this is the glory and by doing this you will become pure you will become purified okay you will become purified and slowly you will evolve now the evolution will happen ultimately because of gnana there's no unconscious evolution the ultimate evolution unconsciously evolution is very slow okay the real evolution is because of con is called conscious evolution which happens because of gnana which is imparted on to you okay but to receive the gnana you should be you should have purified yourself with karma yoga with meditation with uh, dana with uh, all the uh, whatever you are doing as a selfless activity then krishna tells by doing this you will slowly ascend from a stage of unconscious relationship with god with a transactional relationship with god you will move to a more clear relationship where you see a more closeness with god okay and you become free from uh the power of the result the results have no power over you because you are accepting the result as gift from bhagwan whatever result comes then ultimately you get gnana you ascend even more you have now purity because of karma yoga and because of teaching you have you reach para bhakti okay where there's a clear understanding of what god is there is no ambiguity there is no imagination there is no conceptualization god is no longer a concept now earlier god is a concept but still as a concept also he re- he reciprocates but now god is no longer a concept god is reality okay because why because you become free from concepts the more you become free from your concepts the more god who is a concept will become reality and how do you become free from concepts through the process of dialogue with the master where the master questions your concepts questions your concept of i am the doer i am the body i am the enjoyer i am the identity master the master's job is to just question all your concepts including the concept of god okay so one day one person went to buddha and asked buddha is there god buddha said there is no god there is no such thing as god okay then another person came is there god buddha said yes there is god then another person came is there god buddha said i don't know but let's find out together let's sit in meditation and find out together then next to buddha buddha's uh, close disciple ananda is sitting ananda asked buddha you told three different answers for the same question how is that possible buddha said the first person he is a non believer he is a strong notion sorry he is a believer he he is believes in his god okay for him his god is reality he doesn't know he doesn't understand it it's only conceptual so for him i told there is no god to to shatter his belief okay because the in the journey of truth if you find you have to find the truth you have to drop belief belief is something that i don't know okay it's unverified 
so god i need to know not as a belief but as a truth so i shattered his truth the second guy he uh doesn't believe in god now i have to shatter that belief that is also another belief i need to shatter that belief the third person he is confused for him i don't want to give another concept i don't want to give another belief rather i want to question and help him directly go to the truth without the use of any other concept directly realize bhagwan by just dropping the concepts so what happens in you said he made him meditate vipassana where you just start questioning and dropping all the concepts that arises and ultimately see the truth as it is and what is the truth as it is that forget about god i only don't exist what i think is me i think i am an identity i think i am a body i realize i am not the body i am not the mind i am not these concepts i am a pure existence and buddha calls it as awareness i am awareness and that awareness is bhagwan okay that awareness is chetana light and that light is bhagwan and who is that light not that i will see a light okay if i see a light again there is duality there is a seer and the seen i am the light okay that light alone is a reality awareness alone is a reality everything else is just a appearance in that awareness this is the final realization of the in the parabhakti then krishna after explaining this now he starts telling the qualities i told you he tells uh 39 qualities of a bhakta what kind how is a bhakta the bhakta is the bhakta is not somebody who's probably just chanting the name of bhagwan it is very very hard to say who is a bhakta who is a gnani it is almost impossible to recognize who is a realized person how will you realize so people have this question to how do somebody has read all these stories needs a guru how do i find a guru okay that's why the the answer is also given in the scriptures you can never find a guru when you are ready the guru appears in your life okay if you go to find a guru you will go and find a guru based on your impressions okay that's why there's a saying in kannada uh, what is that uh something chan uh chor guru chandala shishya something like that okay that means to say you will find a guru if you are going to find a guru based on your impressions and what are your impressions of guru somebody who is at least 80 years old uh, has a white beard okay has uh, three four long the giant malas has some uh, forehead mark has some particular dress okay probably does some miracles that is our concepts that we have of who is a guru but guru real guru is nothing like that so in ramakrishna's time ramakrishna was known as a madman he is he is param paramahamsa but people know him as a madman because he has no signs of the guru neither he doesn't uh, have any mala he doesn't uh, talk in a nice way he is seeing kali he is crying okay he is talking gnana which people don't understand so ramakrishna is labeled as madman the guru is labeled as madman and the madman is labeled as guru <laughs> please understand it is very very we live in a uh, ulta world where the mad people are recognized as guru and the guru is called as madman so when you try to go and find a guru it is impossible because your guru is based on your impression just the way your god is based on your impressions that is why only when you mature the guru appears and there are some qualities of a guru 
Our qualities can be told, but the qualities can't be seen. So now Krishna is telling the qualities of the bhakta, and none of these qualities you can see. Okay, maybe if you go really close, you will be able to see some of these qualities. What are these qualities? The para bhakta, the para bhakta, he is maitri, meaning he is a friend of all. Now, friend of all, don't think he's always smiling to everybody. He is that uh, you have seen, no? Like the politician. Politician is supposed to be friend of all. He's always smiling, but the smile is with conditions applied. But the para bhakta is friend to all. Why? Because he realizes all as his own self. Also, his own mind has become his friend. So, mana eva karanam manushyanam bandha mokshyo. When your mind has become your friend. then this person has no more enemies the whole totality appears as a friend that's why it's called as a rishi called vishwamitra vishwamitra means the whole world is his friend is a gnani because he sees himself in the whole world then what is the other quality he has karuna karuna is full of compassion the compassion is 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 overpouring okay he has tears of compassion if he sees somebody in suffering he he starts crying so one day swami vivekananda swami vivekananda is known to be a very uh, uh, ruthless vedant okay he comes back to india after his uh, us trip when he comes back to india the, he, there's a gathering there's a gathering uh, and uh, in the gathering many people have come to see him there's some poor people who come to see him and swami vivekananda is interacting with all these people and he starts crying he starts crying listening to the stories of their suffering okay then the other people other so called uh, gurus and mahatmas who are there they start laughing at him they start telling he is not matured he is still weak okay he is crying for such silly things this is all maya he doesn't understand everything is maya he is still crying then swami vivekananda there's a stick there there's a big stick he takes the stick okay and he places at the head of the that person and he tells are you getting scared okay and swami gandhi is is a is a huge huge guy okay a very well built and he's really has the stick and he's going to break his head and the person starts shivering swami gandhi tells him if everything is maya why are you so afraid so what if i break your head in any way it's maya why are you worried okay so just because everything is maya please don't think the bhakta or the gnani is for the bhakta or the gnani for the for, especially for the bhakta the world is not maya the world is paramatma okay if somebody is crying my bhagwan my own self is crying and he is he has outpouring overflowing compassion to his own self okay that is the compassion of the bhakta and the bhakta bhakta has samatvam now i am going to the details of each uh, the 39 qualities i go through it quickly so then first is maitri karuna samatvam samatvam is equanimity uh so i remember a story long time ago i had heard this there's a there's one there's one there's a person in the village this person he he has a horse okay livelihood depends on the horse the horse runs away the horse runs away and all the people neighbors they come they come and they start crying oh your horse has gone out what will you do and all that then the person is very calm he says it's god's will then next day the horse comes back with 10 wild horses okay now if earlier he lost one house horse now he has 10 horses then all the neighbors gather they start rejoicing they celebrating wow your horse came back with 10 horses it's amazing such a great news then the old man says it's all lord's will then third day his son his young son he's sitting on the horse and he the one of the wild horses throws him off and he falls and breaks his leg then again all the neighbors gather and they start crying oh such a misfortune the horse broke your son's leg 
Then the man's old man says, Lord's will. Then the fourth day, so there's a war that's broken out. And the army people have come to each village and they're taking all the able uh, young men for battle. They come to his house and they see this guy is leg broken. They leave him there. Then again, all the neighbors gather and they start rejoicing. And the old man says, Lord's will. Okay. So, Samatva Bhava. Samatva Bhava means whatever happens in my life, something good happens, something bad happens. There's an equanimity. Okay. The equanimity, please don't think it is natural. Okay. It is a spontaneous. No. People, the more the successful person is, the more that person will get, get disturbed if it's, if the Rug is pulled from their feet. Okay? The more you have, the more fear you have of losing what you have. So the person is really wise when both in success and in failure, they're able to have an equanimous mind. Both in job and joblessness. Both in pain and pleasure. Both in favorable and unfavorable. Your mind is equanimous. That is a sign of a evolved being. Okay, so these are all told for you also to reflect. Where do I stand? <laughs> How am I? Ultimately, there is nobody who will give you a certificate whether you are divine, you are bhakta, or you are gnani. You have to measure yourself based on how you your subjective experience in life. Because you can cheat anybody in the world. See, I can cheat anybody in the world. I can talk. Bhagavad Gita, pretty things, nice stories. Uh, I can wear a dress and I can cheat people. Okay? But I cannot cheat myself. I know what is happening inside me. So you cannot cheat what is happening inside you. You will know whether you are equanimous or not. And it's not to prove to somebody else. Krishna is not telling this to... It is only... This is told for you to validate your own evolution. Whether you have compassion. Whether you have samatva bhava. Kshama, the... Bhakta is forgiving. Then Santushti, the Bhakta is content. The Bhakta is abundant because he knows the divine is taking care of him. Okay? The Bhakta, because the Bhakta's vision has changed. Right? The Bhakta has gone from complaining, struggling to realization and serenity. So there's a man who was completely discontented, depressed. He wanted to commit suicide. Okay, he goes to a cliff to jump off. Then there's another wise person there. He tells, oh, why, what happened? He says, I'm dejected in life. I've failed in life. I have nothing in life. I'm going to jump off. He said, okay, you do one, do me a favor. You postpone your suicide for one day. Okay, anyway, you're going to die. Take one day, die tomorrow. So man says, okay, one day what will happen? Let me try. So he says, come with me to the king. He takes him to the king. He tells the man, wait outside. I'll go inside and I'll come. I'll discuss something with the king and I'll come back. So he goes inside. The wise man comes back after some time to this uh, person who was dejected. He tells the person, okay, the king is ready to give you 10,000 gold coins for your right eye. Are you okay with the deal? The man says, what nonsense? I thought you'll come back with something else and you're coming back with such a stupid deal. No, I'll not give my right eye. Then he goes inside again and he comes back. Okay, the king is ready to give you 5,000 gold coins for your left ear. He says, absolutely no. Then again, he goes inside, again comes back. Okay, final offer. The king is ready to give you 100,000 gold coins for your heart. He says, you, are you even speaking sense? Even for the, all the wealth in the world, I'll not even part with one part of my body. Then the man asks, just 15, like uh, half an hour ago, you were ready to kill yourself, telling you don't have anything. And you right now you're contradicting yourself, telling that I have the most valuable thing in life, which is my body. So the mind is always focused on discontent, what it doesn't have. 
forgetting all the blessings and the gift that have that have been showered on you and it's only a matter of not getting something in life it's a matter of switching your vision so the man didn't get anything he's still as externally he's the same but he just realized the wealth that he has in the same way the bhakta is content because he not don't think the bhakta is content because he lord has blessed him like uh, who is that uh, kuchela kuchela went to krishna and krishna blessed him with all wealth so all bhaktas get wealth and that's why they are content no <laughs> the bhakta recognizes the wealth that he has that he already has that's why he is he or she is content the bhakta is has self control the bhakta has atmagnana he is a gnani the bhakta is a gnani gnani is a bhakta they are synonymous para bhakti and para gnana is synonymous then the bhakta is also has can show bhakti please don't think a gnani gnani means uh he doesn't do puja okay it might so happen that the gnani also does puja to give margadarshana to the world okay there are different types of gnanis so there's mata amritanamai who who encourages the worship of the form does puja rituals that is so that there's a order in the society so a bhakta has no enmity to anybody bhakta has no notion of mamakara because for everything for him everything is bhagwan's nothing is mine everything is bhagwan he has no ahankara because the ahankara is also he is offered that's how that's how he has become para bhakta okay he is offered otherwise the apar in apara bhakti you go on offering flower milk what is that uh, honey panchamrita what and all you offer to the bhagwan gokulashmi you offer so many things to the krishna everything you offer except to except for the thing that needs to be offered which is what <laughs> i that is what needs to be offered okay what you think belongs to you okay everything else you have taken from somewhere else the flower you got from the tree doesn't belong to you the water you got from somewhere else you didn't doesn't belong to you nature the food belongs to nature you are supposed to offer that which belongs to you what belongs to you you are only offering things that belong to bhagwan it's like telling uh, taking the water from the uh, river and putting it back into the uh, river offering is you have to it's called arpana you have to offer that which belongs to you what belongs to you the only thing that belongs to you is your ignorance which is ahankara ego that you have to offer to bhagwan and the bhakta has offered he has no ahankara krishna tells uh, shloka uh, 13 he has no ahankara no udvega no anxiety okay now uh, udvega uh, you don't think anxiety is a modern term krishna mentioned it 5000 years ago okay bhakta is not at all anxious anxious is what will happen in the future what will happen in the future my life is filled with divinity the divinity takes care okay the the bhakta has no uh, jealousy no bhaya no apeksha no dependency because he depends on bhagwan the bhakta is gentle the bhakta is impartial the bhakta is has no shoka because he has no grief why he has no grief because the grief is because of thinking against nature somebody who understands the way of nature has no grief somebody who understands non duality who is established in non duality has no grief grief is loss in life okay there's no such thing as loss in life fundamental understanding in physics okay matter can neither be created sorry energy can neither be created nor be destroyed okay so what is the grief this is no con- the bhakta is free from death concept of death because nobody can die energy is just transforming one who dies takes another birth and if the person is a gnani anyway he is free from birth and death so bhakta bhakta has this gnana and is free from grief 
and the bhakta has no desire why because he is he has got the mother of all desires which is bhagwan okay the bhakta is free from duality so this way krishna how so how, uh, from all that i have told how many qualities are there in you so this is the measure of bhakta so please don't tell yourself call yourself a bhakta if you don't have <laughs> i am great devotee of krishna i am dev great devotee of shiva i am a great devotee of this guru if that is so krishna tells these are the qualities that some of the qualities of course it is just indicative illustrative but by and large this is the inner formation of the bhakta not one external characteristics krishna told about if krishna told bhakta looks like this then everybody will start impersonating the bhakta <laughs> everybody will start dressing up like that if krishna tells bhagavat uh, bhakta talks like this then everybody will start talking like it no it's nothing to do with looking or talking or action it is how life is bhakta lives like this his life is a testament to his inner realization okay and this is a result of gnana atmagnana and purity together purity and clarity leads to para bhakti para gnana and para shanti ultimately the goal is all this is fine i want peace and happiness in my life param shantim adhigachati there's a deep fulfillment and peace in my life that is a testimonial testament and the final stamp in an internal stamp that you get and you know that i am peaceful you are not bothered whether other person is telling that you are peaceful in a disturbed situation or not that is immaterial you know that you are not shaking you know that you are not there's no reaction rising you know there is compassion overflowing you are able to see the divinity in all that is the state of realization so with that uh, i conclude the chapter number 12 and also the six the second section which is about tat about supreme reality of the bhagavad gita in the next chapter we will start chapter number 30 13 to 18 is about asi the completion of the equation how jivatma and paramatma are one so any doubts in bhakti is bhakti clear shruti uh sorry i forgot your husband's name shruti pramod pramod shruti is bhakti clear yes guru ji uh navin anu is it clear prasad shilpa Amir, yes, Radhika. <laughs> yes, Guru Ji. Yes. So, so yeah, ultimately, the teaching, right? The spiritual, the the significance in spirituality is given to the source where the teaching is coming from. That matters a lot. The wrong source can destroy life, society, and world. Okay. the source here is paramatma himself okay now how do i know it's paramatma you know because you are able to realize paramatma with this teaching you know because the teaching is not time and space sense uh, contextual it it doesn't apply to a specific region specific time period this truth is absolute 5000 years ago now and even 10000 years ago the truth doesn't change okay the truth is not very specific to some category of society no it is universal in nature there is a universal uh dimension to the truth which 
brings you the which gives you the confidence yes this is reality and it's in tune with my understanding and it's in tune with my life that conviction you will get when you listen to the truth okay and ultimately it brings you peace and it brings you realization which only you can uh, testify to guruji i have a question about uh, self realization self inquiry process most of the self inquiry like the stories what we have heard so far could be ramkrishna paramahamsa or buddha buddha like they will sit in a calm and peaceful uh, place and they meditate for uh, so many days or months or years uh, and they keep asking questions within the mind or something you know they don't pay attention to what is happening with the surrounding and other things so my question here is what exactly happens inside the mind like who is answering and like when you say source of information so i always had this question if the mind is answering and you know the, there might be i don't know like you know when it comes to the source of uh, information it may go wrong in some cases but it is a repetitive uh, process like wherein they keep asking questions why what when and probably they they might find an answer or something like that but th- this is still unclear like months or years or you know who is answering who is feeding that information where it is coming from most of the things happens through guru but eventually like all the stories that we have heard so far is through meditation or something like that why is it so okay so the two parts to it one is it's not so uh, that is your interpretation or understanding of the story okay it has always been gurumukhena gurumukhataha vidyaha krishna also tells in the gita tadviddhi pranipatena pariprashnena seveya upadekshanti te gnanam gnanina tattva darshana shiva tells in the shiva sutra न गुरोरधिक तत्व न गुरोरधिक तप दट इज टोल इन द गुरु गीत मोक्षमूल गुरकृप इट इज ऑलवेज फ्रम टाइम ए मेमोरियल बीन द लॉर्ड भगवान दट यू हेव भक्ति टू वॉट एवर यू आर कॉल सो कॉल भक्ति टू अल्टिमेटली गेट्स प्लीज विथ युअर भक्ति एंड अपियर्स इन युअर लाइफ एज गुरु एंड गिव्स यू द टीचिंग of atma gnana of a uh, guru because ultimately the lord has to come in the human form okay then you have to recognize the divinity in that human form then you have to have a dialogue which will in which your ignorance gets uh, destroyed your questions get answered and the give you guru gives very specific guru doesn't talk about all the things in the world guru's job is very focused sharp direct to the point that is called going to the core that's why it's called sadguru i'm not talking about uh, other subject when it comes to realization the guru is only focused on atmagnana so much so see in ramakrishna paramahansa's case one day there was a man he, he looked out of the window there's a man coming the man the, he saw the man he recognized him and he ju- he ru- jumped and went under the bed and his students got uh, you know it's found it funny why are you going and hiding under the bed he said that person is coming he's coming to ask me blessing for earning more money okay but i am not interested in that i don't want to talk to people who are who are after kama and uh, artha artha and kama i want to focus on moksha then there was a master called uh, in uh, this thing uh, uh, kanjan gad a master called uh, swami nityananda okay he is avaduta so he he used to throw stones at people to chase away people who were coming to ask him some miracles in their life okay then uh, there was you know bhagwan datatreya you know bhagwan datatreya so bhagwan datatreya got so fed up with all the people flocking to him because of the siddhis and powers he started uh, drinking alcohol and uh, having the company of women the moment he got alcohol and women in his life everybody went away okay then parashurama parashurama goes to datatreya when he parashurama goes to datatreya he sees parashurama he sees datatreya with a alcohol bottle in one hand and a naked girl sitting on his lap but he is able to recognize the his sadguru 
and then Dattatreya uh, becomes free from that form and teaches him Atmanna. So what I'm trying to say is the Sadguru is required and the Sadguru's only focus is Gnana. Please understand. No, nothing else. The only focus is Gnana. And Gnana is like this. That's why I have named your batch in reading Videha Janaka batch. You know how Janaka Maharaja got enlightened? Janaka Maharaja got realization in uh, so he there's a master called Ashtavakra who's younger than him, who's a kid, okay, who's a child. A child comes to his palace because uh, his father has been imprisoned by Janaka Maharaja. And they have a dialogue of Atmangnana. And Janaka Maharaja gets enlightened. At that time, they didn't have a concept of one minute, ten minute, uh, half an hour. The time they say is, in the time it takes to get onto a horse, put your one feet in the saddle and put your other feet on the other part of the saddle, that much time it takes to get enlightened. How? In that much time, Ashtavakra questions Janaka Maharaja, destroys his ignorance and helps him realize, I am not the body, I am not the mind, I am not the doer. So, enlightenment is a result of Paroksha Gnana, which is you are not the body, okay, you are not the mind, and Aparoksha Gnana, realization that yes, I am not the body, it's your own realization. How it happened? Because you got the teaching, you got the realization with clear, uh, the Guru, the it is no, nothing to do with you. The master has done all the heavy lifting for you. The master has clearly explained how you are not the body, mind, intellect, how consciousness alone is real. That is the process of enlightenment and that has that is the been the case for any master that, that you see. Be it Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, I also got Totapuri, be it Swami Vivekananda. But there are some exemptions like uh, Sri Ramana Maharshi and uh, even Buddha. Buddha had six gurus. Okay. There are some exemptions, but there are rare cases. There are there are there, there are people, there are people who have already got a guru in their previous life and probably had a very thin veil of ignorance, and that drops. Okay, but there are exemptions. But by and large, no guru, no realization. And that's that has been the message of all our stories, all our Puranas, all our uh, scriptures. If you find something else, that means you are only interpreting it in the wrong way. Even the story of Prahalada, right? The Prahalada and Hiranyakashipu and Narasimha is actually a story. Is actually a a story deciphered. Is a message how you get enlightened because of Sadguru. The Narasimha represents Sadguru, who comes and kills the ego. Neither inside, neither outside. So Hiranyakashipu has a power. The Hiranyakashipu is who is that? Hiranyakashipu. Who is Hiranyakashipu? <laughs> Hiranyakashipu. Kashapu means pillow. Hiranya means gold. One who is always thinking about gold, wealth, is Hiranyakashipu. Who is that? One who is always, always thinking about my survival. Who is that? It's you. Don't you always think about your survival? Mera kya hoga, job market, uh, I should get uh, more, I should do investments. What will happen to my children? What will happen to me if I don't come to this class? Uh, what will happen to me if I don't go to a job? You're constantly thinking about survival. That's ego. Ego is the Hiranyakashipu. And the Hiranyakashipu has a power. The ego cannot be killed inside or outside. Cannot be killed by a man or God. Cannot be killed in the day or in the night. It 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 is it has been escaping death from millions of lifetimes. Okay, it will die the day Narasimha comes into life. Narasimha represents Sadguru. The Sadguru is Narasimha is half uh, lion, half human. The message is the Sadguru is doesn't fit your concepts. You cannot conceptualize Sadguru. Okay, it's beyond your concepts. Okay, for a, for a Meher Baba, there's a master called Meher Baba. His Sadguru was a uh, Muslim lady. 
Okay. She came and kissed his forehead and he had a realization. For uh, Janaka Maharaja, a 16-year-old Ashtavakra, who is practically deformed, Ashtavakra means he's, he's uh, handicapped. He is his Sadhguru. So you have a concept of, people have a concept of Guru. Okay, my Guru will come, there'll be light behind his head, he'll have a long beard, then he'll bow down to his feet, nothing like that. So the Narsimha represents that aspect that the ego cannot conceptualize the Guru because if, if it understands, it will run away from the Guru. Okay, to escape its death. Then, the Narsimha kills with the, the ego has a weapon, a power that it cannot be killed with any weapon. No logic, no weapon can kill the ego. The nails, they represent vichara. Okay, they are not, they are not a weapon in that sense. It is a no weapon. A no weapon kills the Hiranyakashipu. The no weapon is the questioning of the master. The master asks, okay, who are you? Who is I? The question is a no question. It doesn't have an answer. Okay, in, in trying to find who am I, the I dissolves. And that is a process. So, I just, uh, I'll end with the uh, deciphering of the story. But all the stories, all, not, ever, not even the story, these are Puranic stories. All the factual historic stories of Gnanis that we know, the popular Gnanis or any Gnani, it's happened because of master, Sadguru, Shishya, Parampara. There's no other way. Does that answer the question? Uh, uh, yeah. 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 The only thing is like, I was thinking about uh, the process of you know self inquiry asking questions and ah. the mind itself uh, uh, you know giving the answers correct so the, what is the process what when they close their eyes what are they doing so that so shravana, that three parts right? shravana manana nidhyasa shravana is guru teaching paroksha gnana you listening so many times in the listening itself the realization happens okay no more manana nidhyasa is required for janaka maharaja he didn't he heard the teaching over that moment itself is manna nidhyasa. He is uttama quality disciple. For a madhyama and adama, probably more contemplation is required. So what is the process of contemplation is, now they are away from the guru, physical presence they are away from. In their own space, wherever, they are doing a self-inquiry. They are sitting with the eyes closed. Why? Because they don't want uh, in other input to the mind. Then they are continuing from the thread from the guru and asking, who am I? The guru has given some instruction. Guru has given the instruction, who is I? Then this person is inquiring, who am I? And they find that there is no such I. That I is just an appearance. So what is happening inside is two things. One is whatever the Guru has instructed they are doing. Okay, What the Guru has instructed, we don't know. It depends on the person. For like uh, for Parashurama, Dattatraya told 12 years you do Sri Vidyopasana. <laughs> for 12 years, first he did Sri Vidyopasana to become purified. Then he came back for Atmangna. Then he came back telling, oh, I've done 12 years Sri Vidyopasana. I got all these benefits, but still I, my duality is not gone. Then Parashwana, uh, Dattar Raya tells, fine, now I'll give you Atmangna. Okay? So depending on where you are, the Guru might give you different instructions, Upadesha. Okay? But for a qualified disciple, the Upadesha is always simple. Tattvamasi, you are that. Okay, so that is Shravana. Then self inquiries go and find out yourself who is the I. So there's a self reflection uh, inquiry. Then Nididhyasa is sitting as the self, no doing, no thinking. You, you, you assume that that person sitting uh, with the eyes closed is thinking something. No, they are in a pure thoughtless awareness. It is called Nididhyasa. Or Sahaja Samadhi. Just sitting. Okay. Then, with the eyes open also, that person is in Sahaja Samadhi. So, there is a Samadhi. So, I'll talk, I'll take up Samadhi in another session. Uh, we'll go deeper into Samadhi in another session. The Samadhi is a practice wherein you sit, you're sitting with the eyes closed and the mind has become silent. Then there's a realization, which is called Sahaja Samadhi, which is called Jeevan Mukti or Self-Realization, where with the eyes open, 
your mind is tranquil. So don't get uh, deluded by all these stories and uh, you know uh, uh, TV serial and movies and Amar Chitra Katas. <laughs> they are trying to communicate the truth. Half of Guru's job is to uh, make you unlearn all this stuff. <laughs> Atmanan is actually very simple. To me, to tell you your Shiva is very simple. To make you unlearn that Shiva means Jata and Snake and Ganga is very difficult. <laughs> that is the job of the Guru. Okay, Kavin, is it clear? <laughs> yes, good evening. Okay, any other question? Shall we close for the day? Baba, can I have that? So, Guruji, uh, Mayuri here. Uh, uh, I have one question that now, uh, what we are doing day to day, <laughs> bhakti in front of God, like Japa and these, this is a bhakti or what we are doing is right or? Bhakti. So, that's what Krishna clarifies. No, it is also bhakti, but it's not the end. Okay. It is the beginning. Because of whatever. Uh, Punya Karma, you've been born into a, a family where you have come up with that uh, uh, religious notion. You have an advantage. Okay? You have, an, uh, you have because of more purity, you're doing uh, worship of the idol, Krishna or Rama or whoever. Just okay. a good starting point. But I, I, what the message is that there is still a duality. There is me and there is Bhagavan. Okay. Right? Yes. As long as there is me and Bhagawan, there is a duality. Yeah. As long as there is duality, there is suffering. Mm. Okay? So the journey is from duality to non-duality. Non-duality. Okay, so the, the same Bhagawan that you were worshipping. Yeah. But Bhagawan gets pleased and appears in your life as Gnana. So you are you are receiving the teaching of Bhagavad Gita is because of that worship only. Please don't okay. undermine. Okay. Teaching is not to undermine uh, worship. That worship only has got you a guru in your life. Okay? That worship only has got you the teaching of Bhagavad Gita. It's taken you to the next level already. Okay. Right? But the worship only has taken care of your outer life also. All, this, all of that is because of that. Then naturally you will there will be an inner maturity. Slowly you will start understanding what you are worshipping. That, worship that worship will become uh, transform into realization. Gnana. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Guruji. Puja will become Dhyana. Dhyana will become Upasana. Upasana will become uh, Mukti, realization. Okay. Any other questions? Radhika, is it clear? Radhika, Shilpa, Mithaliji, Biplavji. No questions, Guruji. All clear. Prasad All Jesus. clear, Guruji. All clear, Guruji. Okay. So next session, we'll take up um, chapter number uh, 13, 13, which is Kshetra, uh, Kshetragna, Vibhaga Yoga. So next class, we'll take up Kshetra, Kshetragna, Vibhaga Yoga. Asatoma, Satyapya, Tamasoma, Jyotirgamaya, Mrityorma, Amrutam Gamaya, Om Shanti 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 Hi, Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu Harihi Om Vigrubhyo Namaha Harihi Om I'll just like to tell one last uh, 
short story in the life of prabhupad so uh, shrila prabhupad who built uh, the uh, krishna conscious iskon foundation one day he was invited in the uh, one person's place who was supposed to be a, a phd in bhakti okay so phd in bhakti in the tenth of the earth uh, comes out of uh, he has a discussion this person is talking i have done phd in bhakti i have done this i have done so many years 20 years and all that i have read so many books yes all these books then uh, prabhupad comes out of his house and he tells his disciple see this person is talking about bhakti he has done phd in bhakti he has read so many books about bhakti but when he is talking about god there is not a drop of uh, tears in his eyes so anna mahima also used to tell what is the highest bhakti is profuse tears for bhagwan see in your life when you desperately want something right when somebody is not married they want spouse when you like your parents are ill and you want the healing to happen in their life or some change in your life when you want in the desperation you cry right you cry that it should happen same way there will come a time for the fortunate many fortunate people that they cry for bhagwan so ramakrishna was, was such a person he used to cry that bhagwan i want to see you i want to see you i want to realize you i want you and crying that and that cry that cry you cannot fake it comes from the deep being it's a cry of your inner being in a maturity okay and that there are such great uh, beings in the world they are called bhaktas five minutes with the bhakta you spend you will start getting tears because of the way that they talk about bhagwan and life okay you spend five minutes with the grani your outlook on life will change it, it applies to normal life also right you spend five minutes with the billionaire your outlook on money will change same way you change you spend that's why the the importance is given to satsanga adi shankara chatel satsangatve nissangatva nissangatve nirmohatva nirmohatve nischala tattva nischala tattva jivan mukti the highest is attained because of the association with the higher okay so if you are fortunate uh i personally i have been very fortunate in my life to have met divine beings gurus my own sadguru narsimha prabhu bhaktas gnanis karma yogis right and interacting with them spending time with them it transforms your life you don't need any scripture you don't need to read any book okay you don't need any theory all everything all the abundance of the repository of the wisdom and love and peace will just flow through you in the association with the divine so i pray to the divine mother sadguru shri krishna paramatma bless all of us with the constant association with the divine with guru satsanga so that we may always listen see hear think about the divinity and the highest hari hi om shri gurubhyo namaha hari hi om my pranams to all hari om hari om guru ji hari hari om guru ji hari om guru ji thank you for the class hari om guru ji thank you guru ji hari om guru ji yo hari om hari om hari om guru ji thank you